Hello students, I'm Imkong Zinla Punglen from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today, I'm going to speak on the module Paleozoology from the paper Human Origin and Evolution. Now, the learning objectives of the modules are to define the concept of paleozoology, to probe into theory, application, and goals of paleozoology, to identify the impact of physical aspects on future development of paleozoology, to provide insights into fossil and study of modern excavation, to examine the life histories and interactions of all the organisms present, and to relate this biologic data to the instantaneous characteristics of the physical environment, to deal with the recovery and identification of multicellular animal remains from geological context. Paleozoology is the branch of paleontology, paleobiology or zoology, dealing with the recovery and identification of multicellular animal remains from geological context and the use of these fossils in the construction of prehistoric environments and ancient ecosystems. Animal remains that are large enough to be seen without the help of a microscope known as macrofossils. This study is primarily used in the context of archaeology and geology and aids in recreating ancient ecosystems and prehistoric environments. Paleozoology is the science which deals with fossils as a tool for detecting ancient environments in which these fossils lived or supposed to have lived and also the associated sediments that were deposited. This lets us to consider fossils as once living things and not as dry lumps of stones in a museum. Paleozoology is a subject which is simultaneously intensely interesting and devilishly difficult. Paleozoology is concerned with the impact of environmental change on the lives of the past, history of our species without knowing quite a lot about the risk of mortality. Once the preserve of paleontologists, anthropologists and archaeologists, it now attracts biologists, geneticists, bioinformaticians and chemists with fresh methods and perspectives that have met this field an exciting multidisciplinary endeavor. Now let us define paleozoology. Paleozoology is the study of the distribution and abundance of organisms based on the remains from the fossil record. What constitutes a fossil has been much debated, but in general fossils, are the remains of organisms and their activity that have been preserved within the sedimentary or rock record. Paleozoologists study the tissues of many types of animals, including sharks, echinoderms, trilobites, and mollusks, but the most well-known creatures they study are dinosaurs. The easiest remains to study, however, are shields, teeth, and bones, because these do not decay at the same time or at the same rate as tissue. Now let us discuss vertebrate paleozoology. So vertebrate paleozoology uses temporal, stratigraphic and morphological information to map the history of a vertebrate as it relates to the theory of evolution. With this method, vertebrates are listed in order of your existence from heterostracans to mammals and birds. Another method used by paleozoologists, known as quantitative paleozoology, focuses on gathering a census of fossils rather than a detailed inventory of individual remains. This helps to identify which species were higher in number in certain areas. The data gathered by paleozoologists is used in conservation biology which works for the conservation and preservation of living ecosystems and species. Using paleozoology in this science allows conservations to understand population trends of extinct species and living species as well as causes of extinction that could be relevant to endangered species. The zoologist is able to examine the life histories 
and interactions of all the organisms present and to relate this biological data to the instantaneous characteristics of the physical environment. To define paleozoology, we should first define fauna, which is the study of the interactions of organisms with another species and with the physical environment. In such case, paleozoology can be defined as the study of the interactions of organisms with one another and with the physical environment in the geologic past. Now, fauna and paleozoology. Description of fossil flores along with basic morphology is perhaps the longest standing research area of paleobotany. Development of protocols to describe flores quantitatively to sample them in ways that permit reconstruction of original vegetation and to analyze them statistically is a major area of study and a building block of larger studies of ecological dynamics in time and space. Biomechanical attributes of fossil plants. Study of the biomechanical properties of plant tissues has permitted insights into growth and development that are difficult to attain by other means of reconstruction. Emphasis. The two definitions seem similar, however, application and emphasis of both are distinctly different because incomplete preservation of fossil record precludes the examination of many of the standard topics of zoology. Now, the role of time. Zoologists deal with processes taking place during short time span and which are difficult to be observed in the geologic record by paleoecologists who work within a framework of thousands or millions of years. Consequently, both evolutionary processes and long-term environmental change are lacking in zoology. The taxa are not preserved. The zoologist is able to examine the life histories and interactions of all the organisms present and to relate this biologic data to the instantaneous characteristics of the physical environment. In contrast, the paleozoologist can't do that because of the organisms in the fossil record, even the most abundant taxa are not preserved. Now let us discuss about the capabilities of paleozoology. Paleozoology is the investigation of individuals, populations and communities of organisms which lived in the past and their interactions with and dynamic responses to changing environments. Modern ecosystems are only a very small part of all ecosystems that have existed throughout time. Any modern ecosystem which exists today is a product of the trials and tribulations of ancient ecosystems. Thus, an understanding of these past associations provide insight into the present. Paleozoology uses data from fossils to reconstruct the ecosystems of the past. Now let us discuss the aims of paleozoology. Among the goals of paleozoology are the reconstruction of ancient fauna life, the inference of models or modes of life for ancient organisms from fossils, the recognition of recurring groupings of ancient organisms, that define relics of communities or paleo communities, the reconstruction of the interactions of organisms with their environments and with each other, and the documentation of large scale and long term patterns of stasis or change in ecosystems. The important questions addressed by paleo ecologists include the establishment of methods for inferring. Timing of the emergence of modern life systems, relative importance of attritional and catastrophic patterns of mortality among species, search for adaptive explanations for transitions, animal population extinctions. In principle, paleozoology also allows the reconstruction of trends over time, spans that are unattainable by any other branch of science. Because of persistent methodological problems, however, analysis has achieved only limited credibility among mainstream zoologists. 
now physical aspects of environments. To understand the sensibility of past, it is important to observe picture sequence of life. The long and painful sufferings of species were met under several circumstances. Paleozoology thought deals with theories developed and contribution met by different paleozoologists. A more holistic approach stemming from paleozoology has provided a more adequate understanding of the overall picture. Now, it is difficult to predict what theory will be like in the future. In summary, paleozoology is not a mere tool to understand the physical aspects of environment, but it has many other applications, such as understanding fossils as once living organisms, understanding fossils as once integrated communities and ecosystems, understanding range charts which represent biogeographic changes through geologic time. Now, the geological time scale. The geological time scale is the framework for deciphering the history of a planet Earth. We are constantly improving our knowledge of Earth history and simultaneously attaining an advanced state of standardization in naming the units that elucidate this history. The time scale is expressed both in physical rock units and in abstract time units, the latter often with a numerical uncertainty. Now let us see Precambrian period. The Precambrian period is a vast period of Earth's history between 4.6 billion years ago and 570 million years ago. It is about 87% per percent of Earth's geological time. The period stretches from the formation of the Earth to the Cambrian explosion of complex life forms. Scientists theorized that about 4.6 billion years ago, a shock wave from an exploding star or collision with another cloud of cosmic matter caused a swirling cloud of cosmic dust and case to begin to compress. The force of the gravity compressed more and more of the matter and eventually a sun and the planets of our solar system were formed. Over time, volcanic eruptions produced an atmosphere devoid of oxygen but rich in carbon dioxide, water vapor and methane. Atmospheric oxygen increased as alkalinates called stromatolites emitted oxygen. Now let us see the Paleozoic era. The Paleozoic era lasted for about 320 million years from approximately 570 million years ago to 245 million years ago. The era has been divided into six geological periods of varying length, that is the Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, and Permian periods. The breaking formed Gondwana, a composite of continental cores for South America, Africa, Australia, and India. It, was also, it also formed Laurentia, the core of North America. The Mesozoic Era. Mesozoic means middle animals. The era is marked by mass extinction events between the Paleozoic and Mesozoic and estimated 90% of species did not survive while at the end of the Mesozoic era, about 50% of the plants and animals died. Dinosaurs, which are perhaps the most popular organisms of the Mesozoic, lived from about 230 million years ago to 65 million years ago. The two major groups are Ornithischians, that is bird-like heaps, and Saurischians, that is lizard like heaps. Except for birds, dinosaurs became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous. Now the Cenozoic era. The Cenozoic is the most recent of the three major subdivisions of animal history. The Cenozoic is sometimes called the age of mammals. Although the history of mammals began long before the Cenozoic, there was a tremendous spurt in mammalian evolution. The Cenozoic spans about 65 million years from the end of the Cretaceous and the extinction of non-avian dinosaurs. 
Now let us discuss about hominids, human-like primates developed in the late Cenozoic era. The evolution of humans may have been quickened by the advance and retreat of continental glaciers. The age of mountains is another name assigned to the Cenozoic era. As lithospheric plates collided, mountain ranges formed such as the Himalayans in Asia and the Alps in Europe. Now let us discuss about like the distortion effect. Furthermore, distortion and loss of information during fossilization means that fossil assemblages and distributions are rarely concurrent with living communities. Long-term changes in communities may be discerned and related to patterns of zoological change. More significantly, overall patterns of ecological change in the global biosphere may be documented. Evolutionary paleozoology focus on recognition and interpretation of long-term zoological trends that have been critical in shaping evolution. A fossil is the preserved remains of an organism that has died. Fossils tell scientists called paleontologists about living things such as their biology and environmental conditions over Earth's history through the rock record. In addition, they give clues to the conditions of the Earth, that is climate, at that time that the fossil was preserved and possibly relate changes of an organism over time. Now let us see fossil evidence. The study of fossils together with other geological and biological evidence provides information on the history of Earth and the evolution of life. Fossils provide evidence about the relative ages of rock strata, environments, and evolution of life. The fossil record has been used to develop the worldwide geological time scale. Organisms may leave traces of their existence in the sediments formed during or shortly after their lifetime. Fossils provide all the evidence we have about evolution of life on Earth, but this record is far from complete. Spatial conditions are necessary if an organism is to be fossilized rather than decay after death. The increasing rate at which paleontologists are finding fossils of unknown organisms indicates that fossil evidence of many life forms has not yet been found and will never be found. Geochemistry The microstructure and geochemistry of organism skeletons may provide clues about ancient environments. For example, the presence of growth panting in skeletons provide evidence for seasonal variability in climates. The skeletons of fossil organisms, if they are well preserved, also encode valuable environmental information in the form of trace elements and isotopic signatures. For example, the calcium carbonate skeletons of marine invertebrates incorporate trace elements whose proportion is related both to physiology and environmental factors such as temperature and salinity. The isotopic composition of oxygen or carbon within carbonate skeletons is a function of isotopic composition of the seawater in which the skeleton was secreted as well as of water temperature. The evolutionary value zoology. Organisms evolve within the context of other organisms, not in a vacuum. There is substantial fossil evidence to indicate increasing complexity of organism interactions through time. This escalation in the intensity of predatory interactions, for example, may have important implications for evolutionary change. For example, trends of increased spinosity, greater shell thickness, increasingly restricted apertures and other anti-predation adaptations may reflect the intensification of predatory behavior by shell borrowing and crushing predators. Marine animals form a hierarchy of ecological units through the Phanerozoic time interval. This range from blocks of relative stability at time scales of a few million years to broader intervals of general stability of faunas to three great evolutionary faunas. 
At the scale of a few million years, groups of species may show considerable ecological stability punctuated by episodes of abrupt change. During a large proportion of geologic time, a majority of genera, and in some cases, species show little or no change in morphology. Moreover, general groups of communities or biophases also may be similar throughout blocks of stability referred to as ecological evolutionary units and subunits. Now let us discuss about human origin and migration. Analysis of extant human DNA has greatly contributed to the understanding of human origin and migrations. However, an obvious problem when population history is deduced from results with extant human material is that important information regarding population replacements and minor migration events is missed if genetic information has been lost over like long periods of time. However, the retrieval of suitable, authentic ancient DNA from ancient human material and the subsequent genetic analysis is time-consuming and by no means a trivial task. Despite this fact, a number of such studies have hitherto been performed. Cold and or dry environments are ideal for the long-time survival of DNA in the remains of organisms and excellent specimens have been recovered from such climatic locations. Now, development and evolution. Value ecosystems and climate. Value ecology is the study of the distribution and abundance of organisms based on the remains from the fossil record. What constitutes a fossil has been much debated, but in general, fossils are the remains of organisms and their activity that have been preserved within the sedimentary or rock record. Plants and animals that were part of the ecosystems that existed in Greenland and Antarctica before the ice sheets covered the earth can be traced in the basal ice when the right conditions are present. The right conditions are an environment where the temperatures are cold at the bottom and there is no melting. Such a frozen and dry environment provides good conditions for preservation and ensures that the chemical decomposition processes take place slowly. Increases in the mean body size of the individuals of a species, fluctuations in the availability of food supply and in rainfall, computation that is either intra or interspecific, predation and the environment in which the animals live are all suggested as factors which may affect mammal populations. These concepts have provided explanations for the behavior observed within many animal communities with competition appearing to be a significant driving force behind species diversity and density. Information on species responses to past environmental change can help us predict future behavior of species. One area of much concern is the possible warming of the Earth's atmosphere owing to increased emissions from the burning of fossil fuels. In theory, it should be possible to suggest future scenarios of community change and species migration by integrating past vegetation changes with a global circulation model that includes anthropogenically generated global warming. Furthermore, general circulation models and paleoecological evidence suggest that disturbance regimes will likely change with changing climate and organisms. Predictions of future raised temperature effects on the Earth species, which must be taken into account, and recognize that future climate may not simply be warmer or drier, but entirely different across a continuum of spatial scales. Paleoecological perspectives are an expanded view of ecology that considers how organisms, that is, individuals, populations, and communities, have responded to abiotic and biotic factors over long intervals of time. Modern ecosystems are a product of the trials and tribulations of ancient ecosystems 
and understanding of these past associations provide insight into the present. Now the vertebrate paleozoology. Vertebrates are all the animals with backbones, the fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. These animals have attracted a great deal of study. The efforts of generations of vertebrate paleozoologists have been repeat have been repaid by the discovery of countless spectacular fossils. Fossils tell us where the living vertebrates have come from, and they show us glimpses of different worlds that seem so bizarre that they would defy the imagination of a science fiction writer. Despite all of this information that has accumulated over the past 200 years, the origin of the group is hotly debated. Now let us summarize this module. Paleozoology is the field of inquiry that attempts to identify parameters from past life derived from animal fossils, contexts, and then to make interpretations regarding the environment and the well-being of those organisms. Its chief claim to legitimacy is that it provides information about the many species in the past that left no records which allow effective in changing the qualitative and quantitative results of paleoecological studies. The aims of paleozoology can be briefly enumerated to record data from future analysis and provide information for related zoological studies and to verify theories. Using paleozoological data to assess benchmarks integrates these observations. Paleozoological data can contribute to all of those points. Many issues in conservation biology are increasingly important to the long-term health of humanity as we enter the third millennium and as the ever more resource and human population continues to grow. Numerous conservation issues might be addressed with paleozoological data, for example, based on comparisons between remains of prehistoric wild animals and remains of non-specific zoological waste animals show that the latter may be phenotypically ill-equipped to survive if released in the wild. In order to deepen conservation biologists' appreciation of what paleozoology can offer, we must advertise skills. Paleozoologists have focused here on mammals, but any sort of paleobiological or paleoecological data can be of value to those charged with recreating and maintaining particular kinds of ecosystems. Speak to those most in need of the data can provide and those not only produce but also use those data in the surface of conservation biology. Thank you.